Should I retake my GRE? Can I get a better score? And how can I do it? Do you have these questions running through your mind? Then expert answers come your way in 3, 2, 1. Hi, my name is Donna David and I'm a GRE and admissions expert here at GREH. Today, we're going to talk about retaking your GRE and discuss the advantages of it and how you can get a better score. So we'll discuss valid points, legit, with data. At GREH, we believe in the importance of data. In fact, we track a lot of data using the millisecond monitoring technology and track every student's performance with utmost detail. So let's get started addressing the first hurdle. Should you retake your GRE? To help you out, take this quiz along with me and count your yeses and nos. 1. Did you reach your target score in your first attempt? 2. Does your dream university have fast admits with your current GRE score? 3. Were you confident in the exam with no nerves? 4. Do you think your score matches your preparation? Finally, did you prepare the best you could? If you have answered mostly no's, then your best bet to take your GRE again. Now, what score should you target in your second attempt? If you've scored less than 305 in your first attempt, then you should target a 310 plus in your second attempt. Now let's answer why. Take a look at this example of how university shortlisted for you will also vary along with your admit chances. Of course, just to clarify, your GRE score is not the only deciding factor. There are a lot of other factors like your SOP, profile, LORs and so much more. Taking University of Connecticut, a 3 times scorer will need an extra edge to get an admit as it's got high competition. But for a 315 scorer, there's a fair chance to get an admit. Thus, it becomes achievable for them. On the other hand, for a 320 scorer, University of Connecticut becomes easier to crack with such a high GRE score, thus becoming a safe university to target. To conclude, Better GRE score, better the admits, with just a minimal increase in your score. But is it possible for you to get a 310 plus? We are here to answer that question with data. Take a look at GRE students who gave their GRE a second time. If you've scored below 300 in your first attempt, you still have a whopping 20% chance of scoring above 310 in your second attempt. What? And for those of you who already are in the 300 to 309 range before, then you have a 35 to 45 percent chance of reaching a 310 plus score. So scoring a 310 plus is totally possible. But wait, how far away is it? From our sample of 310 plus scorers in their second attempt, we found out that they spend an average of two hours per day for 60 days. Meaning, if you spend three to four hours every day, then you can wrap up your preparation even faster. Easy peasy, right? And how can you score better in your second attempt? By preparing differently. Now let's discuss what are some of the biggest obstacles faced by those retaking their GRE. Let's break it down section-wise. Ah, the biggest struggle of GRE. Cracking this is always the hardest. But what are those tricky questions that you will be totally unprepared for? We asked our GREH SFAs to help us understand those sly questions that evade us and hamper our chances of getting a good score. Number 1. Tricky reading comprehension questions Don't hold any regrets this time when tackling reading comprehension. There are two types of questions you need to keep an eye out for. The first type is the MCMS questions also known as multiple choice, multiple selection questions. When we are being presented with a plethora of choices, we naturally tend to freeze up. Should I choose option A or B or both? When there is more than one correct answer, it's easy to get super confused. Let's try this example for practice. Feel free to pause and read the passage before you take on the question. Let's look at a question based on this passage. Which of the following might the author cite as an example to support his argument on Zeus? Choose all that apply. Option A. Zeus could do nothing to save the last Tasmanian tiger, the thylacine, which died in captivity. Option B. Animals are meant for human amusement and it would be impossible 
to catch them in the jungle. Option C. It is inadvisable to keep catacins such as orca and dolphins confined to pools. Have you tried it? The correct options are... Let's find out how to solve it. Point number one. What's the author trying to say? The author simply believes that zoos are pointless and there's no reason for it to exist in the 21st century. Simply put, the author dislikes zoos and has a negative perspective towards them. He also says, we are responsible for their peril in the first place. Meaning, he is unsupportive of the idea of human beings creating and maintaining zoos. Thus, the two options highlight a negative approach to zoos. Here are some helping hints. Look at the passage first. Try to understand the author's perspective, whether it's negative or positive, supportive or unsupportive. Check the logic of the question. What does the question want? Immediately, one or two options may not fit the context at all. Eliminate them entirely. Compare the remaining options and check which evidence is more evident in the passage and choose the one that makes the most logical sense. If they both do, choose both. Question type 2. Inference question. Now what is an inference? Simply, it's your conclusion. Let's take a look at another example. Feel free to pause and read the passage before you attempt the question. Here's the question based on a passage we just read. From the information presented in the passage, it can be inferred that predictive analysis can be successfully employed in making the following predictions. Except, option A, companies identify market segments based on certain indicators of data which are most receptive to their product. Option B. Doctors use statistical methods to analyze patterns and predict outcomes for individual patients, which they would never suspect otherwise. Option C. Insurance agents use it to reveal certain surprising associations with data to plan new schemes. Option D. Financial institutions using delinquent customers' database to optimize recovery rates by making appropriate plans for recovery. Finally, Option E. Space scientists using various equations to predict the next occurrence of a solar eclipse. The correct option is... Let's find out how to arrive at the right answer. Predictive analytics is used to make predictions about unknown future events. So the only way to answer this question is to identify those events which include assumptions and those which are independent of it. Space scientists have already correctly stated the next occurrence of a solar eclipse based on definite data. But the other parties need assumptions to make their decisions. Therefore, the correct answer is option E. Here are some helping hints. Be careful about the difference between inference and assumption. Assumption is creating an imaginary situation while inference is drawing conclusions from existing data. Understand the author's perspective. Have clarity of the question. Break down the tone of each answer option. Select the answer that best suits the context. Quotes must be a piece of cake for most of you, but it also happens to have the largest scope for silly mistakes. Let's discuss what are some of the things that you need to watch out for. You got verbal and in the verbal section. <laughs> Well, worded problems are one of the most difficult type of questions to attempt, especially because of their mix of interpretation, logic, and conversion. So basically, sentences equal to equation. Not easy. See what I did there? So jumping into practice time. So let's bring out an example. In a company of 250 employees, 100 are married. A total of 120 employees are male. If 20 employees are female and married, what is the probability that an employee selected at random is a male and unmarried? So let's find out the solution. The total employees equal 250. Total married employees equals 100. Therefore, total unmarried employees equal to 150. Now, the total male employees equal to 120. Therefore, total female employees equals 130. Total female and married employees equals 20. Therefore, total male and married employees equals 100 minus 20. 
which equals 80. So total female and unmarried employees equals 130 minus 20 which is 110. Total male and unmarried employees equals 120 minus 80 which equals 40. Event A is an employee being male and event B is an employee being unmarried. Therefore probability of A intersection B which is probability of an employee being male and unmarried equals 40 upon 250. So how do you solve future questions like these? Here are some helpful hints. Read it carefully, without rush. Categorize into what's given and what's not. Take unknown values as X, Y, Z and so on. Check what you need to find. Look at keywords. Here's a helpful chart for you to understand what sign to use for which word. Get helpful hints like these along with all the formula that you need for a 170 on your GRE quads. All available in an exclusive ebook provided in the description below. Check it out. Number 2. Surprisingly sneaky questions. Tricky questions are peppered throughout the GRE quant section, but certain sections especially may have some parts that you may have a hard time figuring out. Topics like permutation and combination, statistics and probability are the easiest to make mistakes in. For example, six dice are thrown simultaneously. In how many outcomes will the fourth die result in number four? The answer is six raised to the power of five. Let's look at how to arrive at the solution. Let's first lock the outcome of die number four. The remaining five dies can have six possible outcomes each. So the permutation needs to be applied only to five dies. Thus the answer is 6 raised to the power of 5. Here are some helpful hints. Look at the questions carefully. Watch out for the answer they're expecting versus what you think the question asks. Draw it out. Whatever the data is, write or draw it to visualize it. Those were the crucial steps to tackle some important problems in quant and verbal. Now let's look at four powerful tips that will make your entire preparation a whole lot better. Number one, accuracy equals time management. Are you worried about running out of time? So how do you beat the clock? Focus on increasing the accuracy of your questions. Now if you practice more questions and get them right, it will not only help you solve them faster, but it will also boost your confidence. Number two, research the pattern. Two words, experimental section. Now don't leave this out during practice or else raise for a real shock in your examination. Also, know about the different question types to expect in your exam to avoid unhappy surprises. Number three, stop practicing and start polishing. For your GRE practice, focus on those areas where you face difficulty in instead of general practice because focused practice equals better scores. Number four, relax. Yes, the GRE is worrying, but throw the notes and grab a movie seat instead. 50% of students mention that one of the key reasons of not getting the target score in the first attempt was their high anxiety and the pressures of scoring well. So don't let your worry get you down. And that's a wrap. We hope you found some useful tips in this video on how to retake GRE. And we wish you all the very best on your journey to your target score. You can do it. Also, if you have any questions or doubts, do leave a comment below and we'll get back to you with a solution from our experts. Also, if you like this video, then hit that like button and subscribe to GREH Online Academy for more such videos. Until next time, this is Dara David signing off. Happy learning.